This week we have set up our solution at Parsisen to go through a series of operations and trials to validate our solution and see what the operator feels uh, about the system. Can they do the same operation manually or with a robot? MSM is really the workhorse of the nuclear industry. They move fuel, they move all sorts of tooling around nuclear environments, but they do come under a lot of hammer and they get it well used by their operators. With some of the robotic systems we're putting on to, to add to the, uh, the MSM experience, we can limit the loads that are applied to them and we can automate some of the functions. We've two different sets of problems. Number one is the wear and the use that MSMs get. Uh, if we can lighten the load and limit the amount of loads that are applied to them, we can make them last longer. The second part is how do we take operators away from the coal face of the nuclear site to give a bit more distance between the radiological hazards and the, the operator. The system works by adding a pair of collaborative robots uh, to the existing MSM so that we can retrofit the solutions so that we can do remote operation with MSM. So the idea is quite simple, by having a robot on the MSM side and a robot on the operator side, uh, the operator can control the MSM but from any distance. And uh, on top of that, it's a very modular system and scalable system, meaning each robot does not have to be the same. Well, we're implementing this force feedback or this haptic feedback uh, between both collaborative robots and it has to be in real time. So, uh, so solutions have been proposed in the past, but they don't give you that force of feeling, that, that haptic feeling. Uh, so it's quite difficult to get the communication between both robots right and be able to do it in a safe manner for the user as well. The main challenge was to put the system as a whole together and then fine-tuning the parameters of our algorithm so that we can reproduce exactly the MSM feeling onto the robot for the operator. When operating the system, I felt like it was intuitive. I could actually feel using the, the joystick when I hit the table or a block, I could feel it through the, the remote. The operator can see using the system a whole range of sensors from point cloud data to RGB cameras and stereo vision camera. This range of sensors gives him the full um, awareness of the surrounding of the environment so that he can perform the task uh, as best as he can. When I first picked up the system, I thought it was going to be harder than it was, but it was, it was kind of at one with the MSM and I picked it up really easily. So the operator gets a feel of perception uh, through the VR headset, thanks to the Iris VR. Uh, we have a, a couple of sensors installed in the cell uh, that allow the operator to, to get that feel of perception that they wouldn't get uh, through the MSM because you are essentially operating at a distance. So using the Iris platform, we have multiple different uh, robotics modules packaged up in a way that means that they can be combined together by non-roboticist end users Iris is a perfect solution for a system like this because, because of the modularity aspect of seeing, we can quickly interchange robots and sensors, add new sensors into the system so that we can scale the system to any of the end user requirements. A large part of the cost of these sorts of systems is typically from software integration that requires a large amount of software engineering to do. Going with the Iris approach where you have small general purpose functional modules that you can combine together in a plug and play fashion to make a system for a specific application, we're able to massively reduce the, the costs of robotic systems for the end users. Plug and play robotics allows the user to control any robot uh, in a very user friendly manner. Uh, they essentially just have to launch the, the application for uh, the specific robot and they don't have to worry about programming or, or doing any of the more uh, technical aspect of the manipulation. It's really difficult th today's tasks. We're trying to integrate some off-the-shelf robotic equipment with some bespoke nuclear equipment, and that interface in between the two has been a challenge for many years that we look like we're overcoming today. The next phase in the project is making up a much better interface between the Cobot and the MSM, which we almost through the design work for, uh, and that'll make it so that it's much more adaptable between different MSMs and able to integrate across a full cell of equipment. The real next step for this project is to take it to an active demonstration and go to a nuclear site to show that we can operate an existing MSM. It's been really good working with Createc, another locally based SME specialising in robotics. They bring an awful lot to the party and they work really well with PAR systems. We bring a lot of strengths in the, the hardware and the physical cell around us and Createc's robotic technology is fantastic.